I had cause yesterday to think about the fact that like 70% of men are named Matt. That's weird, right? Yeah, I mean, 70, awesome. 70, we were like trying to think of somebody's name. Jake was like, it's Dave. And I was like, who do you know named Dave? And then it was Matt. And I was like, why don't we think of that? Of course it's Matt. Well, they're all named Matt. I'm Hannah Kaiser, and this is The Bandwagon. Yeah! Postseason post preview! You're watching this on the first day of the playoffs, and unlike virtually all of the top MVP candidates, we're gearing up for the best baseball of the year. I legitimately cannot wait to be freezing my fingers off in the Fenway Park press box tomorrow and embarking on an indefinite cross-country test to not lose my computer charger at the most inopportune moment. <laughs> but before we do that, it is time for my favorite episode. It really is. The one reason to root for all the teams that made the postseason. And this time, we're adding an opportunity for me to alienate the fans that I just appealed to by also telling you how far I want that team to go. Let's get started. Let's do it. Yankees. Woo. Uh, no, absolutely not. There are plenty of people already rooting for the most maddeningly inconsistent version of these large adult sluggers. No one is bandwagoning a mediocre Yankees team that barely snuck into the wild card. I know that parades haven't been quite the sure thing that their legacy would lead you to believe in wrong slightly, but trust me, if you are willing to become a late-in-life Yankees fan, do it because they're stomping on all the small market teams around them and not because they can collectively keep a turtle alive. And even that is yeah, winning Bronx a little bit iffy lately. Yo, Stanton's good. But since the AL East rivalry these days is between the Yankees and the Rays, they'll have to win a wild card before getting eliminated in the division series. Red Sox. Because squinting at Hunter Renfro is the closest any of us are going to get to watching Mike Trout in the postseason. <laughs> and since that's not a very good reason, <laughs> they'll be our first team eliminated on Tuesday. Right. Dodgers! Woo! Uh, we can't actually read you all the missed moments and long celebrations of the past 18 months, but whenever applicable, I encourage everyone to embrace the vaccinated party now. So if you got married over Zoom, host a belated reception. If you hit a milestone birthday during quarantine, do it after the next one. And if you won the weird 2020 World Series at a neutral site in Arlington, even the limited on-field celebration was immediately overshadowed by the reckless behavior of one of your key contributors, Win again in 2021. But I want to be in the picture. <laughs> the Dodgers built a dynasty caliber team, and all they have to show for it so far is a ring from a year everyone would rather forget, and no parade. Conveniently, they have a couple of guys on their team who also lost parts of their championship victory lap to cover the protocol. So, yeah, root for the Dodgers, now including Trey Turner and Max Scherzer, to get a second go and celebrating. I know, they'll have to actually resign Max for him to be there when they have the pennant, but you know, they have that money because you don't pay guys who are suspended. I need them to advance out of the wild card so we can get the Giants Dodgers showdown that this whole season has been building to. Just wish it wasn't a division series. Cardinals. Yeah, the Cardinals are a team in the playoffs. They do good <laughs> defense things. <laughs> And in the spirit of fairness, we'll show some of those and some photos of 40-year-old Adam Wainwright and 39-year-old Yadier Molina embracing over the decade and a half they spent together Aww. in St. Louis because I love baseball friendships. So Look at them, career cardinals and battery buds. But since they both committed to being back next year, and so I'm sorry, but the Cardinals can just go home after the wild card to give us all the NL West Division Series that we deserve. Braves. Before I say anything, I'm going to let the Mets, utterly unparalleled broadcast group, introduce you to the Braves mascot. You know, Blooper's got his own, uh, his own Twitter account. Who does Blooper? Blooper. And he was touting the fact that since he was invented, the Braves have won the division every year. Uh -huh. Another narcissist. <laughs> They're right that the pantsless, flesh-toned, phallic-shaped mascot is surprisingly <laughs> cocky, but that's sort of the appeal. Last year, Blooper really did the most with the least during the fanless early rounds of the postseason, and I would love to see him take his theater curt kid turned frat bro energy to a packed house. Let's see how many mascot-sized costumes the Braves have tucked away somewhere. Or at least how many they can feature in a single five-game series. Sorry, Atlanta, you're out after the NLCS. Bye. Bye. Brewers! What do people hate? Bullpen games. What do the Brewers have? Three stellar starters. What do the Brewers not have? Their Rookie of the Year winning reliever's use of his pitching hand. You do the math. Root for the Brewers to bring back complete games this October. Throw a couple of those to win the division series. We can all romanticize the return of a reliable rotation, but after that, they're going to need to lose to one of those West Coast chucker naps. White Sox. Ooh. Root for the White Sox if you think I should be talking less about mascots and metaphors and more about actual baseball. After a decade of obscurity, the White Sox became the official fun team of the American League last season before getting booted from the postseason before they even got to play in front of fans. 
They've got the actual best rotation in baseball by a whole bunch of metrics, including no hitters thrown before everyone got tired of them. Their bullpen will likely feature a couple of young flamethrower future starters. Plus, the reigning MVP, a silver slugger who's even better known for his lack of an undershirt, and the main character in maybe the most iconic moment of the regular season. Anderson hits it in the end of right. Back at the wall, and the White Sox win it! And contrary to what you may think, installing Tony La Russa at the helm has not made them any less watchable because second-guessing managerial moves is one of the most interactive ways to engage with the game. <laughs> and all of that is why I am deeply ashamed to say that I'll be rooting for them to lose in the division series because I just can't quit the storyline that is the Astros. Come on. We need it for the clicks. The clicks. Astros. Ooh. Dusty Baker is one of only six managers who have reached the postseason 10 times. He's the only manager in MLB history to win division titles with five different teams. He was an integral part of the invention of high five, and he has <laughs> never won a World Series. A critical observer might conclude that Dusty is not a perfect playoff manager, but a more sentimental viewer would say that with the extremely talented Astros starting to dissipate next season, this might be the septuagenarian's last best chance to take home a ring. It's your time. Or at least a diamond and crescent toothpick. Just watch these clips from when the Astros clinch and tell me you don't need more videos of Dusty Baker drinking champagne out of a cleat, the celebrate tactic which is known, really, as the shoey, in which, Dude. I'm serious, grew out of Tasmanian punk culture. What? Who says Dusty can't adapt? They'll need to stick around long enough for people to realize that there is a ton of talent under that hateable exterior, and also to see if fans can throw trash cans into the ALCS, bang, but no bang. longer. Rays! People say that the Rays have no stars, or at least no stars who are allowed to stick around very long, and people are right. <laughs> but Wander Franco found a loophole. He was so famous before he even debuted, and has so thoroughly lived up to the hype from day one. And he swings, hits it high, and deep, and gone! Home run! All the way through his recent 43 game on base streak, which ended on a day that he actually got on base three times, that he's already on the cusp of superstardom. And at 20 years old and still a rookie, Franco is all but assured to be on this team for at least another couple of years. <laughs> so root for the Rays to make a deep run this October, catapulting Franco to well-deserved superstardom in time to attract a new generation of fans to the trap, and by doing so, perhaps convince the ownership to stop giving new fans a symbolic middle finger in the fall pursuit of a two-city future that functions largely as leverage for a new stadium, or alternatively, so that when they do become international nomads, they can change the team name to the Wanderers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't explain it, but I'm weirdly partial to the Rays, and so I'm taking them all the way to the World Series. I know people hate them. Uh, <laughs> Giants. Uh, here's what people were saying about the Giants in January of this year. Everyone can look and see what what else is happening in that division with the Dodgers and Padres. It's going to be it's going to be tough for a young team like the Giants. They're poised to be very good in a few years, but I think they'd be pretty happy if they managed to do what they did this last year, keep things interesting. Understandable, given the sub 500 preseason projections and the division expected to be dominated by two other California behemoths. But then the Giants shocked everyone. The first team to 50 wins, first to 60, 70, 80, 90, and the first team in baseball to 100 wins for the first time since they played in New York City over a century ago. And by late September, MLB Network had this to say about the NL West race. I think the Los Angeles Dodgers are going to eventually overtake the Giants. How could you not root for the Giants to make all those nerds with their algorithms and experts with their yeah. practice games? It was a little stupid. The team is on a six-month exercise in proving why they even bother to play the games. And it all gets kind of erased if they're booted in the middle of the month. So root for the Giants to finish off the magical, movie-worthy season so we can all find out who plays Buster Posey when they take it to the big screen and whether Gabe Kapler will play himself. Start supporting that yeah. For that reason, and because we have not spent nearly enough time so far this season talking about the Giants, who are truly incredible and doing amazing things. Like, seriously, this never happened. I'm rooting for the chance to spend all October wondering how the hell the Giants pulled this one off. And maybe the offseason then, too. Uh, if you were following all of that, you maybe already know how my postseason picture plays out, but if not, we're going to show you the bracket of that right now. So, look at it. Yay! Again, this is what I want to happen. Not what I think necessarily will happen. Yeah, that was our penultimate bandwagon. And uh, it's enough information to hopefully carry you through the next couple of weeks while I'm actually finding out what really happens in all of the series. And then we'll catch up with you at the World Series, and if it's not the Giants' race, nobody be like, hey, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs>